What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to be talking about the upcoming I Know What You Did Last Summer legacy sequel that's coming next July. So I want to start off with the news, the confirmed news, and then we'll dive into the rumored plot details and delve into some of the new stuff that's been sent to me. So Gabriette, a model, has joined the cast of I Know What You Did Last Summer. The model was previously spotted hanging out with the director and a few stars like Chase Wonders, at a concert in Australia. This was highlighted on a few of their social media accounts, more specifically their Instagram stories. But they were spotted hanging out at a concert with the cast and crew in Australia, which is the reported filming locations for the upcoming sequel. This casting news was confirmed via Elle magazine, who put out a put out an interview in regards to the model, Gabrielle. No word on her role. I don't know who she is. You guys have chimed in down below in the other video I did talking about this to inform me on all of her personal life details. Apparently, she has ties to Charlie XCX. All well and good. I don't know any of that stuff. But hopefully, whatever it is that her role is, she delivers. And this can open up a lot of doors for her, potentially. Now, let's dive into the recap, firstly, of the characters I've talked about in the past. Of course, all these names are subject to change. So you have Milo, Ava, both of which have some sort of romantic history. Then you have Wyatt, Christina a climate influencer, and some others that I'm going to get into in a second. So the story is expected to return to Southport, and the story of Ben Willis has become a cautionary tale. Although some of you did point out a great fact. How did this become a cautionary tale when Ray and Julie worked to keep it a secret? So over time, something clearly changed, and this has become a cautionary tale in Southport 30-something years later. I, we'll find out how that came to be, unless there's something I'm forgetting that happened in those first two films. But they worked overtime to protect that secret. So it's like, well, it doesn't seem like it's a secret anymore. Or maybe it just came out what happened in terms of to Ben Willis. But we don't know who hit him. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe that's still the hidden hidden ingredient or the hidden puzzle piece missing which i don't really understand that if that's the angle they go with if they found out ben willis was ran over on the road you would think they would also know who hit him but whatever anyway there's supposed to be a wedding in the works with our newbies and it would appear wyatt is one of the characters getting married his fiance is concerned that he'll leave her like her last husband who is either going to be named richard or teddy or those are both code names to protect the real name but she's concerned that he would walk out on her just like her last husband, but he's adamant that he is not going to do that. Wyatt also dabbles in cryptocurrency, which will be brought up later on in a very important scene that he's involved in. But anyway, the events that set everything in motion are expected to happen at an engagement party. Whether that's Wyatt's engagement party or another friend's engagement party, time will tell. A year after this accident though, Ava tries to rekindle her relationship with Milo, She's also been coping with killing someone since I guess she's involved with this accident. She's been coping with killing someone by seemingly being loose in the streets, something Milo isn't into when she tries to get back with him. Some other characters whose names are subject to change, like always with this stuff, are Kyle, Hannah and Pastor Noah. Kyle seems to be part of the friend group being targeted throughout the film because he was involved in the accident last summer, too. Kyle has been struggling recently since his loved ones began disappearing i'm assuming these are the murders that are going on so he decides to visit pastor noah for some sense of comfort because he has a lot of things weighing on his conscience hannah is already in on pastor noah's little community that she brags about because she saved or because he saved her life and before him she was so dirty and full of sin hannah in a twist also saw Kyle and his friends last summer up to no good. So it looks like we have a witness of whatever goes down that summer with Kyle, Ava, Milo, and whoever else was involved in that accident that makes it their, makes their way to being involved in the narrative when it jumps a year later. I bring all this up to say that I hope we don't get an angle in which a religious community has been hijacked by members of said community and they are now trying to do what they consider God's will by killing these individuals who are responsible for the death of whatever goes on the night of that engagement party. It just sounds very tired, very underwhelming, 
And I'm not saying it couldn't come off well on screen because I'm just saying the idea itself does sound a bit anticlimactic. But the, who knows? The execution could make me make me say completely opposite things by the time I see the film. But I'm just theorizing at this point because you have a character like Hannah who's involved in this community led by someone named Pastor Noah, who, mind you, apparently isn't even in town at the moment. <laughs> so it's like, did you do something to Pastor Noah and you're you, you're corrupting his community to go after the individuals you saw that summer commit a crime instead of turning them into the cops what's going on there it just seems like that's maybe that's a red herring of it all I ho hopefully it is a red herring because like i said i don't want to see a narrative like this in which we're doing something where you have more religious delusional people taking matters into their own hands and they are the ones responsible for these killings that are unfolding they're the ones that have decided to copy the fisherman's old M.O., bring back that iconic look, dress up like Ben Willis. And again, I stress, where does Julie factor into all of this? It's just very weird to me. Nothing I'm finding out makes it clear how Julie even factors into it. And it's no wonder Jennifer Love Hewitt isn't on set right now. I mean, it doesn't seem like Freddie Prince Jr. isn't on set right now either. We don't even know if Brandy's on set. They could be on set and we just don't know. But if they're not on set right now, I've stated this in my last video I uploaded yesterday. It's probably because this film is being shot in order. And so far, the narrative doesn't seem to call for their inclusion on the front end. It seems to be more of a back end thing where these group of people, whoever's left by the end of it all, seek help from them because they've been through something similar. Ugh. I need whatever is going on with this Pastor Noah community to just be a red herring because I know a lot of you are also tired of these cult angles in these horror films. I'm all culted out myself, so hopefully this ends up being a red herring. But like I stated, at the half end of this video, I was just theorizing on the material that was given to me that I shared in this video. So fingers crossed they don't go down some sort of cult narrative because the cult stuff, that's, that's becoming tired. And then on top of that, if I see that next year, but I know what you did last summer, I damn sure don't want to see it in Scream 7. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.